Hi, as I said in the introduction, I want to provide you with a few examples of how I can use video casting to both enhance and supplement my poultry courses at UGA. And so I'm going to give you a few, uh, one or two small video cast examples uh, targeting the Poultry 2020 course and covering a nutritional content which goes along with the case study I'll present on Friday during my teaching demonstration. And so the objectives for nutrition include listing the basic nutrients, so um, energy and protein and carbohydrates and fats will provide their function and we'll look at different sources of those nutrients that are commonly found in feed. We'll define some commonly used energy terms and these are going to be some terms and acronyms of these terms that you'll see over and over again as you go through the poultry curriculum and as you get into the industry. We'll discuss factors that affect a bird's requirements for these various nutrients, so age and sex and breed. And we'll look at some micronutrients and deficiencies that result from an inadequacy of uh, these nutrients in the feed. Now the whole purpose of the poultry industry is to take the nutrients in the feed and convert that into a sellable product. So for the broiler, broiler industry, that is taking the nutrients in the feed and converting it into broiler meat, whereas in the laying industry is converting it into eggs. And so you need a very good foundational knowledge in nutrition in order to make this process efficient. And the poultry industry has made tremendous has made the production of broiler meat very, very efficient. And it's efficient because of a better understanding of nutrition, better management practices, which we'll cover later in the course, and then a just superior genetic bird. And we'll talk about the genetic selection that's led to uh, this, this amazing growth rate. But all three of these, genetics, nutrition, and management practices make broiler production very efficient and because it's very efficient you can see um, in relation to our let's call them rival animal agricultural industries beef and pork broilers broiler production is going to increase and it's on this upward slope that shows no signs of slowing down. Also, well, this is let's say this is when you're going to graduate. When you're going to graduate, the poultry industry is still in an upward swing. That means there are going to be jobs. And so if you major in poultry science, I have no doubt you will find a job. You should see it's it's a hundred percent here at UGA. Um, and so the point is, poultry industry is growing. Um, and one aspect of that is because of better understanding of nutrition. Now the reason why you could see the poultry industry or the broiler industry in particular was on a much greater slope than that of um, beef or cattle, it's because as I said, um, broiler production and poultry production is very, very, very efficient. Uh, and a measure of efficiency in animal agricultural is FCR, which stands for feed conversion ratio. Sometimes you'll see it uh, stated as feed conversion efficiency, or sometimes just feed efficiency. Um, and so these are terms that are very important uh, because they represent really how profitable your product is going to be. Uh, as we'll see, the largest uh, contributor to cost in the production of, of, of these sellable products in animal agriculture is feed. And so the less feed you can give to get more sellable product, the more profitable you will be. And so the way we can do that is through this feed conversion ratio. And so it's the amount of feed required for one pound of body mass. And so less feed to get more gain, so you want a lower number. And so this low number 
is very impressive. So about 1.7 pounds of feed to produce one pound of body mass in the broiler chicken. This means there's a new term that's came that's coming. It's to, to eat to, to be environmentally conscious in your eating. And so one way to do that is just to be a vegetarian. Good for you. I like the taste of meat. Um, and so if you want to be if you, if, you, if you want to feel better about yourself while eating meat, this is the most ecologically and environmentally friendly um, meat, and that is broiler because it takes less feed, less input to produce the product. So feed efficiency, very important. Feed conversion ratio, very important. The reason why it's very important is because feed cost, as I said, is the major contributor to the overall cost of production. In fact, feed cost, let's highlight this, accounts for around 70% of total production cost. That's a lot of money. Because of this, um, a lot of emphasis has been placed on trying to find the least cost feed formulation and getting the least feed cost per unit of sellable product, meaning lowering the FCR by lowering the feed cost. And so in order to lower feed cost, sometimes you have to seek out alternative ingredients and so get nutrients from alternative sources. You have to make sure that the alternative sources meet the nutritional needs of the broiler or layer. And so you need a really firm understanding of nutritional requirements before you can get into feed formulation and lowering an FCR and making the production more profitable. So, in order to, for us to get a better understanding of poultry nutrition, let's begin to look at nutritional requirements. So before we get into the nutritional requirements, let's look at the categories that the nutrients belong to. Um, we will get into water and the importance of water. We'll see that water is a good way to track how much feed is being uh, consumed by uh, the chickens. We'll also look at proteins uh, from our digestive lecture. Uh, we learned that proteins are made up of amino acids. And really, when you are formulating chicken feed, it's not necessarily the protein, which is sometimes referred to as crude protein, we'll talk about that, that's important. It's amino acid levels, and that's because the chicken has different people say different things, different nutritionists, but the chicken has 13 amino acids that should be monitored in all feed. Now remember, there's a total of 20. Um, seven of them are easily made uh, by the chicken, but 13 need to be watched and really there's three that are considered uh, very critical and we'll know we'll come to know those as methionine and lysine and tryptophan so uh, we will cover these and their importance and this is actually typically the most expensive ingredient uh, that needs to be uh, accounted for when doing uh, feed formulations. Carbohydrates from our digestive lecture, we learned that they are um, polymers made up of the monomer, uh, mono, monosaturides. And our monosaturides were glucose and galactose, and then we had the disaturides of maltose. And so these are very important for energy and they make up about 75% of the bulk in poultry feed. Um, and so the main products that go into feed, filling your carbohydrate need is corn. And we'll see that corn makes up the bulk of all poultry feed. Uh, lipids are very important because they're energy dense. Ooh, sorry. So, but let's go back. So they're, they are very energy dense. Okay, dense in energy. And there's really, so the breakdown product of fats, if you remember, was typically a glycerol and a fatty acid. There is one particular fatty acid that's of utmost importance in poultry because it's essential, and that is linoleic acid, linoleic fatty acid. 
and so this is one that you will have to watch out for when you're doing feed formulations. Lastly, we'll cover the vitamins and minerals and their importance to health. Um, we'll see one, one issue that's coming uh, up in the poultry industry is we're reducing the amount of antibiotics and so by reducing the amount of antibiotics we may not get as efficient a growth and supplementing with some extra vitamins may be a way um, to, to keep our feed conversion ratio and growth rate ideal. Um, so we'll get to those later. So as we're talking about nutrients, it, it makes sense that these nutrients are going to be converted into the macromolecules of the body. So what is the composition of our body? Well, not really the composition of our body, but the composition of farm animals. And when you're looking at this, it really stands out that broiler meat, uh, chicken meat, is actually the leaner and healthier meat. And that is because comparing it Comparing it to uh, steer, lamb, and pork, you see that uh, the broiler has a higher percentage of protein while also having a lower percentage of fat. That means it is a healthier choice and it's a nice lean meat. Um, so, it's lean, it's healthy, and it's efficient. It's a great agricultural commodity. Now, in order to be efficient, you need to be uh, wary of energy because a chicken will eat to fulfill its energy needs. And so if the diet is very high in energy, so if it has a higher energy value, caloric value, the chicken will eat less. If it has a lower energy value, caloric value, the chicken will eat more. And so when you are doing your feed formulations, uh, all of the nutrients have to be in line with the amount of energy that's in the feed. So what is energy? Um, so the terminology for energy, the measurement of energy is, um, universal measurement is a calorie, which is the amount of energy of heat as heat that's required to raise the temperature one gram of water, one degree Celsius. In, in nutrition, um, the kilocalorie, or calorie with an uppercase C, is often used. These are the calories that you see on the back of a Snickers bar or a box of cereal. Um, and the kilocalories are often how you're going to see um, energy content of poultry feed expressed. And so what it is, is this the kilograms, the amount of heat, amount of energy as heat in one kilogram of water raise it one degree Celsius. Now there are um, some other energy measures that you may see um, in, in poultry feed formulations. One is a joule and a joule equals 4.184 calories. Um, another one that's not used that much but still may be in some circles is the British thermal unit. And so that's the amount of energy as heat to raise one pound of water, one degree Celsius. And that is typically around 252 calories. So we have kilocalories. That's the measurement of energy. How do you determine how, much, how many kilocalories or how much energy is in feed? Uh, the instrument that's often used is a bomb calorimeter. And so in a bomb calorimeter, you take the feed, uh, you put it in a well insulated, so let's see this, this well insulated cup, you place that into a container of water, and then you put um, a high amount of pressure in there using oxygen. Uh, you then ignite it with electricity, and the heat given off is going to give you the determination of the caloric value of the feed, and that caloric value is termed the gross energy. And so, a bomb calorimeter is often used to determine the energy value of feed and feed ingredients. So we have gross energy. Gross energy is the energy that's determined by using the bomb calorimeter. It's the total amount of energy in the feed. Uh, it does not necessarily amount to the energy that's available for production purposes. 
And so you'll often have several different definitions concerning energy and poultry feed. Okay, so let's look at some of those. Um, so digestible energy, that's the portion of gross energy that's not lost in fecal matter. And so that's easy to um, determine. And so essentially you just take uh, the gross energy of the feed that was given to the bird and you subtract that from the energy that's contained in the fecal matter or the energy lost and that will give you your digestible energy. Uh, probably the most common reference to energy in giving you values for poultry feed and the ingredients that go into poultry feed is metabolizing energy. And so that is often giving this acronym. You'll see it in feed formulations a lot, metabolizing energy. And so this is the energy fraction of the gross energy that's not lost as fecal or urinary and gaseous exchange. Um, and so typically, again, as I say, this one is the one you'll often see reference. And it's a good proxy for the other forms of energy, and that includes uh, net energy, which is the fraction available for both maintenance and production. And so maintenance is going to be all of the energy used for, you know, cellular repair, um, uh, tissue repair, uh, maintaining body temperature. And so what we really are feeding for is this energy of production. And so this energy of production is what's going to give you your growth and your you know, eggs and your meat yield. And so that is what we are looking for. And often it's approximated by using metabolizing energy. So now that we know a little bit of the nomenclature concerning energy, now we can see what that energy is used for. And it's used for maintenance. And so, as I mentioned earlier, maintenance is going to be the energy required for the normal cellular processes that occur um, in the bird. And so tissue repair and, and, and body temperature maintenance. It can also um, uh, be thought of as the energy required to where there's no net loss nor gain in body weight or productivity of the bird. And then you have growth, and so the energy is going to be used for growth. Um, the broilers, as we'll see in our genetic uh, lessons, have been selected for a tremendous growth rate and so in order to provide fuel and nutrition for this growth rate um, we need to feed them effectively and just to give an example of how intense their growth rate is um, if you took let's say a 6.6 .6 pound human baby and they grew at an equivalent rate of our modern day broiler at two years old, that baby would weigh 660 pounds. Whoa, wow, that is a lot of weight. And so you're going to need a lot of energy and nutrition to fuel uh, this tremendous growth rate that is now in um, uh, broilers. And so to meet the genetic potential that we have selected for in, um, in our legrins, which can produce uh, over 300 eggs a year, or the broiler chicken that can reach six pounds in under eight weeks, we need to provide them with a, a very nutritious and energy-rich diet. There are some factors that affect um, the energy that's going to be needed for growth and so one will be age um, and so age is going to be younger birds are going to have a more immature um, digestive system handwriting is bad immature digestive system and so they also another thing is they're also going to eat less so they'll eat less um, per bound per 
unit of body weight per unit of body weight and so what this all equates to is they will probably they're going to need a more energy and nutrient dense feed Uh, sex. So sex is going to have an impact. For instance, when you are raising broilers, you're often raised males and females separately. And that has to do with um, the fact that males are going to have a higher feed efficiency. Um, so they're going to grow more rapidly. Um, since they're going to grow more rapidly you're probably going to want to have a, a more dense um, energy nutrient dense diet for them as opposed to the females now so we've talked about uh, the nutrients let's look at the components of nutrients and the macromolecules that we're going to look at in little mini lectures and so those include protein carbohydrates lipids and then Water is, a, is also considered a nutrient. Um, <clears throat> now these are all going to have different amounts of energy. And so lipids are the most energy dense and they'll give you around 9.5 kilocalories per gram. Um, they have a lot, anytime you see a lot of this carbon and hydrogen, these long fatty acid chains, there's a lot of energy embedded with them. The carbohydrates will give you around 4 kilocalories per gram. And proteins are also going to provide energy, although typically you don't want to fill your energy needs using protein due to the expense. Um, but nevertheless, they can be uh, used to produce energy and they will give you about four kilocalories per gram so pretty much the same between those two showing you that fats are the most energy dense and they're often the ones used to increase full me me, me metabolizing energy of the feed so in summary you need a sound knowledge and you need to sound knowledge and you need to apply nutritional practices uh, for efficient poultry production. The cost of feed is the major expense in poultry, poultry production and the energy content of the feed determines how much uh, the bird will eat. And so if you have an energy dense feed, they'll eat less. And so you really have to um, look at the energy level as you are uh, formulating uh, the nutritional value of the feed. Carbohydrates, proteins, and fat are the major macronutrients needed. And carbohydrates, which we'll talk about next, make up the bulk of the feed at around 75%. And that comes largely from cereal grains. And the most important of which is going to be corn. So king corn. So our next video cast will be concerning the carbohydrate and fat makeup of poultry feed. Um, we'll look at some of the cereal ingredients, of course, king corn, which is very important um, to animal agriculture, as well as a new biofuel, which will be addressed in our, um, our case study on Friday. And we're going to look at the fatty acids and pay attention to our one essential fatty acid uh, that you're going to have to keep an eye out when formulating poultry feeds. Okay, until next time.